before you arrived, we were looking at the ship's log. It wasn't lost at sea. No. The very last entry was a strange word. A word that Mina thought meant undead. Undead? Yes. Uh, Nosferatu. Ah, it means not dead. You were right. No, with your permission and all due respect to Miss Van Helsing. There is a distinction. Dead. Undead. I don't care. They all frighten me. Oh, I love to be frightened. Do you? It's fascinating to examine what happens during this fight. First of all, on closer inspection, it's clear the Endoraptor wants no part of this. It's just after Maisie. Time and again, it will shake off Blue, launch itself at Maisie, and attempt to claw at her face, or to snatch her, only for Blue to save the day. When Maisie and Owen are leaving through the balcony, the Endoraptor again launches itself at Maisie, and again, Blue saves the day. It's clear the Endoraptor is not interested in this fight. It's only interested in Maisie. When Maisie and Owen are inching their way along the outer wall, the Endoraptor again attempts to get Maisie by throwing itself through a window, and is again stopped by Blue. Not wanting to lose its prey, the Endoraptor launches itself through a window and falls to the roof below. I think this goes to show us how obsessed the Endoraptor is with Maisie. Despite being clawed and bitten by Blue, it doesn't care. It's not interested in Blue or this fight. It only cares about getting Maisie. We know how to save Miss Nina's soul, if not her life. If she dies by day. But I shall see that she dies by night. And now we find ourselves at the end. The Endoraptor has cornered Owen and Maisie. That's when Claire shows up, with the one thing that can have some control over the Endoraptor. Sacrilege! Sacrilege! Now the Endoraptor is presented with an ultimatum. Does it go and get Maisie, or turn back and stop Claire from using the laser? But it seems that choice isn't for the Endoraptor to make. I will find your earth box and drive that stake through your heart. Owen and Claire, working as a team, set a trap for the Endoraptor. Claire switches the laser on, turns it on Owen, and she activates the laser. Owen, as bait, slides down the glass ceiling with the goal of tricking the Endoraptor to fall through the glass. This doesn't work. In a show of great personal triumph, the Endoraptor has overcome the laser. The Endoraptor looks at Owen full of disdain, and shakes its head in disapproval. Fools, do you think with your crosses and your wafers you can destroy me? Me! You do not know how many men have come against me. I am the king of my kind. You have accomplished nothing, Van Helsing. As the Endoraptor falls to its death, one must ponder, did Blue kill the Endoraptor? Or was it Owen and Claire? Did they distract the Endoraptor long enough for Blue to arrive? 
Or was it beauty that killed the beast? The story of the Interweptor is a classic tale of beauty and the beast. It takes the majority of its inspiration from Dracula. Fallen Kingdom also uses the 1922 film Nosferatu, a retelling of the Dracula story, as the main inspiration for the Interweptor specifically. The Nosferatu elements come into the story through the Interweptor's obsession with Maisie. Count Orlok, the Nosferatu, becomes obsessed with the goal of drinking the blood of a woman pure of heart named Ellen, ever since he discovered her with his psychic abilities. There's even a scene in the film when Orlok and Ellen become aware of each other through a psychic link. At the end of the film, in his state of obsession, the dreaded Nosferatu heads to Ellen's womb, and in a scene Fallen Kingdom pays homage to, Count Orlok stretches out his monstrous hand to take the life of Ellen and feast on the blood of her pure soul. However, in his blind obsession, the dreaded Count Orlok did not pay attention to the time and is killed by the rays of sunrise. Beauty has killed the beast. The Endoraptor also inherits traits from Count Dracula's vampiric nature, like his iconic hand pose. Maisie's original name during production was Lucy, a reference to Lucy Westernwer, a character from Dracula. Lucy is bitten by a vampire and is given a new life as a vampire. Lucy, a young innocent girl, given new life by unnatural means. I think the in-universe reason for the Interruptor's obsession with Maisie is because it can sense that she has entered the world in an unnatural way, just like itself. The bane of the Interruptor's existence, the laser targeting device, can be viewed as its garlic or cross. And the shape of the glass roof that the final confrontation takes place on resembles a casket. And when the Interruptor falls through the glass, it gets pierced through its heart from a stake of sorts. I bring this up because a Dracula reference once again shows up. This is an homage to the classic imagery of a vampire in its coffin getting a stake driven through its heart. The Endoraptor is inspired by the vampiric side of Dracula, and especially the monstrous Nosferatu retelling of the story, and Maisie is its victim inspired by Lucy. But there's another side to Dracula that the Endoraptor doesn't inherit, and that's the charming, charismatic, and flattering side. Where is this side of the smooth-talking Count Dracula? I believe that this side of the Count in Fallen Kingdom is Eli Mills. Mills is a financial bloodsucker leeching off of the success of Lockwood's legacy and using it for his own nefarious purpose. Mills closely resembles the classic charismatic Count of old, using his charm to get his way, flattering Claire into doing his bidding, and smoothly talking his way out of a tough situation with Gunnar Eversol. But don't worry, every villain has his foil. Owen Grady, or should we call him Van Helsing, sees through some of the lies that Count Mills is spinning.
I think that the most vital information needed to fully understand the Enderwaptor, and perhaps Fallen Kingdom as a whole, is that it's telling a vampire story, a Dracula story. And once you understand that, everything else falls into place, and the full picture is revealed. This shows us where many of the biblical themes in Fallen Kingdom come from. The Dracula story is full of religious imagery and motifs. It's deeply biblical. And I think that the Dracula story is what inspired J.A. Biona to tap into biblical themes for Fallen Kingdom. Many people compare Mills to Lucifer, and I can see why. Count Dracula is a deeply manipulative, and Luciferic figure. J.A. Bayona is retelling a Dracula story. The story of Fallen Kingdom at its core is retelling a heavily modified, inspired, modern, and loose retelling of the Dracula story. But the scaly vampire in this story isn't just out to drink your blood. It's out to eat you. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Why do you think the Indoraptor was obsessed with Maisie? And what do you think it represents? Let me know in the comment section below. This is the Dinosaur Man, and I thank you for joining me on this adventure, 65 million years in the making. And I hope to see you again, soon.